folks, my name is Tia Watson and this is Cinch Talk Tuesdays. Um, a friend of mine suggested that I needed to get a YouTube channel so I took her advice and I have no idea what I'm going to put on it. Um, I did a little video the other day, uh, a gal that I know was asking how to rope a, or, uh, wrap a center on a rope or cinch or nylon center and uh, I hadn't seen any videos on how to do it or anything, so I figured, well, heck, I'll, I'll make one for her, and she can check it out, and, uh, anyways, I made it, and then I couldn't send it, because the sucker was too long, so I ended up having to upload it to YouTube in order for her to watch it, or get any use out of it, so, um, that, that's the first, first video up there, um, I figured I'd start this Cinch Talk Tuesdays. And uh, for this first one, you know, I'll just kind of introduce myself and tell you guys a little bit about myself. Um, if there's anything you guys want to talk about or uh, know how to do or something, you know, message me on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, or you can email me. My email's on my YouTube channel. Um, anyways, like I said, I'm Tia. Um, I started building cinches probably five, six years ago, something like that. Uh, we were working in Idaho, and I had this fancy little cinch that I thought was just awesome, and uh, wore it one day. We were gathering a p pretty big pasture, and I was riding one of my husband's colts, and it was it was just kind of a half day kind of deal because we couldn't. It was getting so hot we couldn't push those cattle very far, and uh, so about noon we all trotted back to the trailers and jumped our horses in and I went home to go start dinner and he went to go start checking waters and stuff and hauling water to cows and uh, I got home and unsaddled horses while that cinch had uh, galled my, his colt pretty bad. <laughs> I was pretty embarrassed and I showed him and said well you gotta kick him out until he heals up like he must just have been a little little soft or something well then the next day he let me ride his, his good horse. Um, went out there kind of same deal you know we started real early in the morning and about noon it got too hot and we stopped and went home and unsaddled ISO and sure enough it galled him too and it was just like man this this isn't good so it kind of intrigued me and made me wonder like why is this brand new cinch that's only been on a horse twice starting to sore horses like right out the bat um and this was you know summertime it was like June on the desert or so um so everything was pretty fit um, anyways, I started kind of looking at cinches and looking into stuff and, um, it's like, heck, I can do this. This is easy. I do this in my spare time. And, uh, it's not easy. My first couple were very rough. They got the job done, but I learned a lot using them and, uh, my horses, I'm sure didn't appreciate it very much, but... Uh, learned a lot from it. Now I'm a couple thousand cinches into it, I'm sure. I've lost count over the years. Um, I decided to start selling for the public after a bunch of friends started asking for for cinches and whatnot. And uh, I've been very blessed in this um, this business. I've I've shipped cinches all around the world, which I think is really cool. I'd never thought that would be a thing um, and, and this business has enabled me to work from home now um, I've got a little baby boy who's five months old um, I quit my my full-time day job with insurance and benefits <laughs> which I mean is a terrifying thing but you know five months ago I was just like god what am I gonna do with my life because I was doing the full-time deal and I was doing um, the cinches on the side you know in the evenings and everything and I, I just, I didn't think that making the cinches and doing, um, I was a brand inspector and having a baby was gonna work very well because I don't, I'm a very poor time manager, if you guys must know. Master procrastinator right here. Um, but anyways, uh, the, the cinch game has really, really blessed me. I've worked really hard to build the reputation that I have. Um, I'm very proud of my cinches. I've spent a lot of hours not only researching and looking at stuff and 
you know, testing my own gear out as well. Um, but reading a lot and discussing with other makers that I'm friends with, you know, certain, certain aspects of this cinch making game. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of, it's one of those pieces of equipment that nobody ever really thinks about. Um, but it's probably one of your more important pieces of equipment. So we were cowboying and I started making a couple cinches here and there and then uh, we moved a few times and I got a couple different jobs and then I kind of got real serious about this cinch building deal um, when my husband went to taxidermy school and uh, it was a way to keep me entertained in the evenings and uh, it just it has blossomed from where I started. Um, you know, it's it's opened a lot of doors for me, and I, I get to I I do a lot of different disciplines. I shouldn't say a lot. I I do a handful of different disciplines. Um, primarily, I cowboyed for a living for since after college, so since I was 21, and. Um, roped a lot. I really like roping. And now I'm currently getting into the rain and cow horse deal. And um, it, it's really, really fun to see my cinches at work and on different body typed horses. And just getting a feel for, for what works, for what discipline, and what works for what saddle rigging. Um, that's probably the most important thing that a lot of people don't understand is your rigging and your cinch style um, really come into play when um, you're trying to fit a horse or hard to fit horse or you know if something's going wrong there's always always something um, you can tweak to make it better um, but I do preach proper cinch fit to people and proper saddle fit um, it's really an important deal, especially, you know, for me, I, I grew up using horses and I made my living using horses and my horses, you know, if my horses weren't comfortable or my horses were hurt or something was wrong, like I, my job didn't get done. So my, my biggest, uh, grievance with a lot of people is, you know, you, you gotta, um, you gotta make your horse comfortable and you gotta do what's right for them because the, the better they are the better your ride's gonna go whether you're trail riding whether you're roping whether you're using them for your job um or if you just really like going out and saddling your horse and looking at them like it doesn't matter if your horse is comfortable they're gonna do their job to the best of their ability uh for you most of the time um anyways uh, check out my website. That just went up, crossincinches.com. Um, we got this YouTube channel. Find me on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, that's about all the social media I can handle currently. This whole YouTube thing's kind of new to me. Um, I've been playing around with it. You'll kind of see on my website that we've got a couple different options for saddle or er, uh, saddles. Um, couple different options for cinches. You got your straights, you got your ropers, you got your cutters. Um, I don't know that I have a picture of any cutters up there at all. But, um, and I've got horsehair cinches, which I'm really proud of right now. Um, mostly because they're just really fun and I like horsehair cinches. Um, I had a friend start twisting cord and she probably twisted hundreds of feet before she finally sold me a kit and um, I bet you she built probably 20 horsehair cinches before she actually sold any of her horsehair cinch cord and uh, I still ride that first horsehair cinch of mine it's actually on my cut and saddle right now um, and it's probably one of my favorite cinches ever uh, I like it I like them horsehair cinches mainly because they um, I've played around with them a little bit, and um, I've noticed that they kind of 
pull moisture away from a horse a little faster than your mohair or your alpaca usually does. Uh, they still, mohair and alpaca are still um, great, great materials for a cinch. They're soft, they breathe, wick moisture away. I like the horse hair, mainly because it's more of a traditional, um, traditional material. Uh, back in the day, they didn't really know about mohair and alpaca, so everything was made out of horsehair or burlap, which was, is pretty cool to know. Um, so I, I pride myself on my horsehair cinches. Um, we've added dye to them. Um, I've made a couple, and Aaron's made uh, matching McCarty's for me, which is really fun. Um, McCarty's or get downs, you know, just depending on what stage your horse is at or whatever. Um, and uh, they're just, we've added color to them. Um, I tried to tie dye some the other day and I'm still perfecting that. Um, that is kind of an expensive experiment that I've gotten into. But yeah, it, you know, check out the horse hair. Uh, if you've got questions about it, message me. Uh, if you've got questions about mohair, message me. Alpaca, message me. You know, if you're you're curious on how to fit a cinch to your horse or how to measure one, or if, you know, if you want to see on one of these uh, Cinch Talk Tuesdays, if you want to talk about a certain subject or whatever, email me, um, Facebook Messenger, whatever. I'm always down to help uh, educate people and, um, you know, help other makers build better products. Uh, honestly, there's there's so many cinch makers, so many talented cinch makers out there. There's there's so much going on right now in the cinch industry. It's it, it's awesome, honestly. Um, and I, I see a lot of new makers, especially with this pandemic that we've had. Um, a lot of people are at home with a lot of time on their hands, so they're like, hey, let's let's start a new uh, a new hobby or something. And um, you know, a lot of them have picked up cinch making. And I've got quite a few emails with people asking me questions and stuff, and it's awesome. I love sharing information, and I love that people are educating themselves more now um, about proper tension and about, you know, certain designs that, you know, would this work or would that work, whatever. Um, tying techniques, you know, how, you know, I've had a couple people message me and be like, you know, they want to build their own cinch. Uh, but they don't know what cinch to build or what size if I'd help them out and it's like absolutely like you know if this is for your horse like let's get you set up and rolling right right out the gate I mean the sooner you can build a better product the better off the whole industry is because um, it only takes one bad product to sour one person and that one person tells their five friends and that five friends turns into 50 friends and that 50 friends turns into a hundred pretty soon there's a whole group of people that don't want handmade cinches because one cinch soared one horse or one person had one wreck because of an ill-built cinch so it you know it, it's protecting our industry um the more educated people we have out there the better uh, so like I said, I'm going to wrap this up real quick because I got uh, dogs to go feed and kid to get inside. But um, if you guys have any questions or you want a topic to talk about, uh, feel free to message me and let's talk and get one of these, uh, these YouTube videos up on a subject you want to talk about.